a very well-known shop in the local area. They specialize in GTRs. Got an R33 right here, R35 out there, another R35 over here. Inside they have two V-Spec R34s. This is by far the cleanest V-Spec GTR I've seen in person. It's so rare seeing one R34 in pristine condition, let alone two. Hey everyone, it's Alex. So today I'm gonna to be bringing in my car into a shop, giving it some maintenance, some love, uh, and some new parts, which I'm excited for. But before I did that, I wanted to showcase the car a little bit, uh, show everyone what I'm driving out here. Also show that before look, and then when I get out of the shop, give it that after look as well. I think it's a pretty cool car. I hope you guys recognize it, and also hope you think it's a cool car. But let me know what you think in the comments. Let's give it a look. Sylvia S15 Spec R. Super clean car, about 60,000 miles on it, so super low mileage. Been absolutely in love with this car ever since I bought it. Can't wait to see what adventures it takes me on over the next few years. But yeah, this is what I'm gonna be driving, so let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Now we're gonna take a quick look underneath the hood and in the interior. Super clean, as you'll see, but also just let me know what you think. All right, let's take a look. Under the hood, you can see it's pretty clean. You can see that there's some wear and dirt on the metal, but that's gonna be expected from a 20 year old car, so not that big of a deal to me, especially because I can clean that off easily. You can also see that there's a few aftermarket pieces underneath the hood. Nothing crazy though, it's mostly stock, so I am pretty happy with that. Two aftermarket additions that I really like seeing was the upgraded intercooler and the oil cooler. You can't see the oil cooler that well, but it's definitely there. Biggest things I'm trying to get done with this car when I turn it into the shop is to get the engine tuned, get feedback from the shop, and see if any other essential parts need to get replaced, and then other parts that I'm going to mention later on. Then my favorite part is the interior. Looks brand new. No worn out racing seat someone put in, no tacky seat covers or shifting knobs, just plain stock look. And I intend to leave it this way too. All right guys, now we're gonna make our way up to the car shop. This car shop is pretty well known in the area. Very reliable mechanics. The owner is extremely nice, very friendly. Doesn't speak that great English and my Japanese isn't that great. So it's gonna be a little interesting to tell him what I want done with the car. But nonetheless, he's a very helpful guy, very reasonable and I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do with this thing. I don't have any clips of the car in action yet. I wanna save that for after the car gets nice and polished, both inside and out. Stay tuned for when I get it back from the shop because let's just say it's not going to be just a show car. Had to take a short break on the way and show you guys an iconic place to visit, Enoshima Island. For all you anime lovers, this place is famously used as a setting for dozens of animes. Enoshima is also famous for impromptu supercar meets. This is a meet I witnessed years ago at Enoshima. Don't mind the horrible vertical video. I didn't know what I was doing back then. Alright guys, so that's a quick view of Enoshima. Beautiful place to come visit if you're ever in the Tokyo area. Definitely make a point to come down here and check it out. If you guys want me to do a more in-depth video of Enoshima and the surrounding city, let me know. I'll be happy to do that. All right, let's keep moving. All right, guys, so I'm getting closer to the shop. And before I get there, I thought I would quickly share what I'm going to try and get replaced when I drop it off. So first off, I'm definitely going to get those rims replaced. They're looking kind of old. I personally don't, don't like the white uh, rims. Going to look at trying getting a black rim or a steel gray rim on there give it a more clean look and then also you can't tell very well but the suspension on this uh, car is really bad it's really really stiff uh, whoever had it before me definitely made this a track car I already had to replace the engine mounts before because they were just straight metal pretty much the engine mounts the stiffer they are the easier it is to shift but all it did was just make the ride super uncomfortable for me and then the last thing is I have to get some wiring done Nothing major with the wiring, but it definitely has to get cleaned up and try and clean up the hood a bit while I uh, get it dropped off at the shop. So those are the three big things I'm gonna get fixed while I have it at the shop. And yeah, when we get there, I'll try and point out what I'm talking about. Another thing that crossed my mind while I was driving this car 
was I really want to know what your thoughts are about JDM cars and if you're a big fan why you are a big fan I'm personally a big fan because it really brings me back to my childhood I used to play racing games all the time like Gran Turismo and cars like this always just were a blast of racing now having one in real life is an amazing experience it makes me feel like I'm back you know a little bit in nostalgia in my childhood when there were simpler times just really fun to live out my dream and then the other thing is JDM cars in my opinion are very raw it's just you in the road with them especially the 90s versions and that's what I love I feel like I'm on the road actually you know a lot of these cars nowadays just have a lot of like quieting and silencing kind of tools which is nice it makes the ride very smooth very calm but at the same time it kind of gets you disconnected from everything else it makes you feel like you're not really driving a fast car or anything anymore it looks like you're just moving quickly that's another reason why I really enjoy having a older JDM car let me know what you guys think in the comments below but yeah those are my two big reasons why I love JDM cars so much all right guys we made it to the shop Veruza a uh, very well-known shop in the local area very cool shop as you can see they specialize in GTRs got an R33 right here R35 out there another R35 over here got an R34 over there uh, very very cool shop they specialize in GTRs but also work on Sylvia's too and then inside they have two v-spec r34s be a very very cool opportunity to get them on video and show you guys but i'm gonna ask the owner first i want to make sure that it's not gonna be uncomfortable for them but hopefully they let me i'll let you guys know all right let's go check it out as you can tell i was given the chance to video the gtrs inside veruza i'm gonna wait to talk with the shop owner on camera i just want to make sure they're more comfortable with me videoing and also i want to be able to improve my japanese a little bit more Anyways, this V-Spec is so clean. It looks as if it's never even been on the streets. The Nismo rims are a great touch, and the fat rotors just reminds you how fast these cars can go. And next up is this beautiful black GTR. This black GTR is actually the shop owner's GTR. And up close under the hood, you can see the RV26 engine cover. Absolutely pristine. Alright guys, well officially just dropped my car off, it's going to be uh, getting maintained for a while, getting new parts installed, all good, excited to see what it looks like afterwards, but until then I am officially carless, you can see behind me I'm waiting for a bus to show up and take me back to the train station so I can get home. But with that being said, that's going to be it for today, really hope you guys enjoyed the content I had for you, let me know in the comments below what else you want me to do, uh, what places you want me to explore be happy to do that for y'all. I love sharing my adventures in Japan and I will continue to do so as long as y'all enjoy. All right, that's gonna do it. Until next time.